I recently did a video on autoimmune disease and it's, it sparked this video. And that's because I was looking into the causes. And if you are like 95% of Americans, so 95%, you are deficient in this critical thing in your diet that is really putting you at risk for a lot of chronic inflammation, it's putting you at risk for autoimmune disease, and other things like lack of in insulin sensitivity, the counter of that is insulin resistance. So this is a pretty important factor in your diet. And as I said, um, if you're getting enough of it, you're, you're in the exclusive 5% club. So I'm talking about fiber. And uh, this is something that is extremely deficient. And, and what does it do? Well, let's say what happens if you don't get enough. It's linked to digestive issues like constipation and diverticulitis. It's linked to heart disease, our number one killer. It's linked to type two diabetes. It's also linked to colorectal cancer. So these are diseases that are uh, very present in our environment. And what an easy thing to change, relatively easy. I, I know it's on a gradient, but we'll get there. We'll, we'll get how to do this. I wanna first make the case of why it's so important. So, um, what happens is that we have in our colon microbes, they're called the microbiome, and there are 40 to, sorry, yeah, 40 to 60 to 100, there's a lot of numbers bandied about, but trillions, so tens of trillions of these organisms that are either very protective or causing you problems. Now, when they're functioning the way they should, what happens is they take fiber that you eat, and we're talking about what's called uh, soluble fiber and also resistant starches. And so what happens is when you're eating soluble fiber or resistant starches, and I'll define for you later what foods those are in, these, they are not digested in the upper yeah, you know, they're not digested in the stomach, they're not digested in the small intestine. They remain intact all the way down into your colon. And that is by design so that you can feed these microbes and make them healthy and happy. When they are healthy and happy, what they do is they ferment the fiber and they turn it into something called short chain fatty acids. And what these do is they decrease inflammation, they support gut barrier function. So what that's referring to is if you've heard of leaky gut, leaky gut is um, when things that should stay within your digestive tract are now allowed to pass through into your bloodstream, creating a lot of havoc on your immune system, put, putting a lot of stress and strain. And uh, again, autoimmune disease, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the the side effects of that. They also, these short chain fatty acids, promote the production of what's called regulatory immune cells. For short, they're called Treg cells. And what they do is, is they kind of help your immune system to know, this is a bad guy, go get it. No, 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 this is fine, relax. You don't need to get all excited about that. So they're making that distinction for your immune system of good versus bad. So when you don't have these, then your immune system can, can just get into this frenzy of attacking everything. You can lose the gut barrier function, as I mentioned, so have a leaky gut, and you can have a lot of inflammation. Just those things alone, just controlling that alone would make a tremendous impact on our population, truly a huge impact. So we want your microbes to be fed so they can ferment what, they, that what you ate. They can ferment fiber. That's all they do is they ferment fiber. You don't eat fiber, you're starving them, and what's happening is, is you're getting a switch of good microbes are going away and bad microbes are reproducing, and that's a bad thing. So we have to feed them 
and all they want, they have a very simple diet. They just want fiber. So we have to feed them fiber so they can do all these wonderful things for us. So let me um, review some foods. I, I have them written down here. It's a pretty, pretty long list. So again, you want a balance of soluble and insoluble fiber in your diet, but particularly we're focusing on soluble fiber. So things like artichokes, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, carrots, beets, eggplant, okra, leeks, onion and garlic, sweet potatoes, that's for the vegetable category. In the fruit category, we have apples and berries, avocado, which is a fruit, uh, or, uh, oranges, figs and dates, plums and peaches, and berries. So there's a wide array there of, of foods that you can get a part of your diet and raise your fiber content. Now there's also something that, that these microbes like, which is called resistant starch. So, because when you think of starch, you think of things like, you know, white bread and potatoes and rice and things that actually get digested very quickly, tend to raise your blood sugar, and then the blood sugar plummets, and you're hungry again, and you crave sugar. So, you know, starches are something we're, we're pretty aware that we don't want a lot of in our diet. Resistant starches are entirely different because they're resisting digestion, and then they're turning into fuel for these microbes in your lower colon. So that's a good thing. And what it's surprising what some of these foods are because one is cooked and cooled potatoes also cooked and cooled rice so it's it's a mechanism that happens you cook a potato it's warm you cool it then you put it back in the fridge like you're making potato salad and the cooling changes the function of the starch and turns it into a resistant starch. So you could heat it back up again, that's totally fine. Um, same thing with the rice, but it's gotta be cooked and then cooled, and now you have a resistant starch. Uh, psyllium husk is, is um, another one of the soluble fiber that I don't think I mentioned. Uh, legumes are another um, resistant starch, as well as whole oats. So this is not oat flakes, but this is the you know, like the steel cut oats that you can buy, and that's another resistant starch. So, and I'll have all, all these listed in the description of the video so you have them to uh, look at and see how you can fit these into your diet. Uh, but women need about 25 grams of fiber, and it's pretty easy, uh, you know, you can look it up, you can Google it, you can see on a label, although mo most of what I'm talking about is, is not labeled, right? So you get an apple, it doesn't have a label on it. So you have to do your own due diligence to see how as a woman I'm gonna get to 25 grams, how as a man I'm gonna get to 38 grams. Um, I usually tell patients just strive for close to 40, you'll be good. Um, but that's what we wanna do every single day, every single day. So in our American diet of highly processed food, there's no fiber, and that's why we are so very deficient. That's why we have our microbiomes being upset with us and being inflammatory and having leaky gut and all the cascade of problems that go with that. You know on this channel I talk a lot about hiatal hernia syndrome. What's at the root of that? Inflammation of your gut, imbalance of your microbiome. So this fits beautifully into the hiatal hernia conversation, as well as the general let's get a lot healthier conversation. So I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to increase our subscribers so that more people uh, can get exposed to what we're talking about. And also, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. You can share it with others uh, that are suffering with health conditions that you think this might be appropriate for. So I very much appreciate you. Thank you for listening and we'll talk soon.